So am I looking at you or am I looking at camera? My name is Troy Jensen. I'm a celebrity makeup artist and a photographer. And today we are going to transform Susan Yara into Merle Oberon, who is a iconic beauty from the 1930s. She was an actress and I consider her Hollywood royalty. This might look like Halloween makeup, but it's not. Today, I'm with the talented Troy Jensen, and it's a special treat because he has the ability to turn a woman into an icon with his makeup and photography skills. Merle starred in one of my favorite classic films called Wuthering Heights, and Kate Bush wrote a song about it. It's a love story between Merle and Sir Laurence Olivier, and it ends with sort of a ghostly twist. Today we're gonna create that same kind of ambiance with this house. And rather than shoot it in a studio where it can be really stark and modern, I'm really gonna try to conjure that energy and that spirit with Susan and we'll see what we get, you know? The look that we're doing, if you tap that right there and scroll that way, Jerk, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's Merle Oberon. Isn't she pretty? Doesn't mm -hmm. she look like Susan? That's what we're creating today. The transformation starts with hair. So yeah, when I do shoots, I usually do the hair, the makeup, I'll style it. I guess you can say I'm a bit of a control freak. A bit. <laughs> then we move to the makeup. The makeup back in the 1920s and 30s, it was, you know, it was black and white film, so the technique was a little bit different than they do today. The makeup was much thicker. They would work in black and white tones. Her makeup won't really look that attractive in color lighting. She's gonna look a bit sickly and <laughs> a bit ghostly. But once I light her and once we get her in the scene, it'll all come together. And there's little touches that I have to do right before shooting, like add Vaseline on the eyelid, on the top of the cheekbone, down the center of the nose, just sort of pop the features. But until then, she's gonna look a little sickly. The thing about the makeup in the 1930s, it's really glossy and shiny. And yes, I have to wear glasses because I'm completely blind. You look cute in glasses. Do you, oh, did you put something in there? Yeah, I put a little bit of the Dior oil mm -hmm. and just some very pale pancake makeup. Because the thing about with this makeup, we're gonna be spraying oil and stuff on it. And if mm -hmm. I do just a liquid base, mm -hmm. it's gonna go everywhere. You're basically gonna be pale and sickly for about a week. This just doesn't come off. <laughs> You're fine with that, right? Yeah, it's cool. By adding the shimmer, the glow kind of comes through the makeup, mm -hmm. so it'll look more like skin. This is what we call beating the face. <laughs> <laughs> What's that do? You know what it does is it, it imprints my pores into your pores. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't just look like base, it looks like skin. See? Mm, wow. Well, it's all about like highlights and contour, you know? It's not about bringing life to the face, it's about actually working with very, very strong lighting. Because I want it to stay really light, I'm using actually white matte eyeshadow with a little bit of translucent powder. Mm -hmm because even translucent powder would add color to your face. I'm going to dinner like this. <laughs> I dare you to go to dinner like I'm this. going to dinner like this. I added just a touch of silver. Mmm, some shimmer. More of a, to give, to give the grayness, to, to cool, really cool down your complexion. This is an old palette from Stila that I just cannot get rid of. Really pop those cheekbones. Contouring from the bridge of the nose into the eyes. Do I get to wear lashes? Oh, hello. You and your tricky questions. <laughs> of course. Just contouring the lid. Mm -hmm. The crease so that we may hit it with the lights. It really pops the contour. Oh wow, that really changes the look of my eyes. So she has those like thin, long brows, right? Shh. So I notice you wet a lot of your powders. I have more control when I wet the shadows. And we're doing this shape that was very trendy in the 1930s. Slightly rounding off the outer edges. Mm -hmm. They called it the smear. Look up. And it became more exaggerated in the 40s with like Joan Crawford. But in the 20s, 
you, the little, you saw how it looks like they put like a little dark here, dark here, and a little dark here. It almost looked like a little. Geisha. Little, almost geisha. That was called the bee sting. Mm. And then this lip, this shape came, and this was actually a very scandalous lip shape. This would be like wearing like pasties out in public Ooh. back then. You know, it was very, like, that kind of girl wore it. Have you heard of OCC? Mm-hmm. Obsessive compulsive. It's basically a liquid lipstick, mm -hmm. but they dry kind of matte. It's almost like foundation, the texture of it. This is a tricky lip to do, because it's so dark that it has to be perfect. And after I put it on you, you can't do anything. You can't drink, you can't eat, you can't anything. I'm using a little bit of black eyeshadow to kind of matte out the texture mm -hmm. and really intensify the depth of the color. It's pretty flawless. Okay, let's do lashes. I've never seen it done with the Sharpie before. It's one of my pet peeves when you see the line, the, the lash, line. you know. We're doing the last lash. Okay. I doubled them. One gave more thickness to your lashes, and then this is just about length. And because there's not a lot of liner, this is a very difficult lash to do because it's all about that first placement. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get it right, I'm basically screwed. She's so into herself right now. I'm so into myself. She's right living. Now. Merle lives. Hair and makeup is set, and then we actually have to backtrack. When I do a shoot, I usually prep about a week before, and Susan did not make the fitting. So of course the clothes that I pulled, I pulled some really beautiful gowns from For the Stars Fashion House and they didn't fit. So we have to actually go back and try some other gowns on her to refit her because she didn't show up on Thursday and do my fitting. So now we have to start all over again. Damn you. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose, but that does mean I get to see a place most of his clients don't. When I'm creating a really iconic look, I come to this showroom called For the Stars. They make clothes for everyone from Katy Perry to Lady Gaga, um, Nicki Minaj. Beyonce wore that for her tour. They're made by a few designers from different parts of the world and they do these really beautiful showgirl bodysuits to this. I shot this on Courtney Bingham for Valentine's Day. We did a really sexy video and it's a bodysuit all in pink feathers. I think we pulled some really great pieces for the shoot today. We picked the gowns and then head over to the photo shoot at jewelry designer Cynthia Boxhouse. This is rock crystal with diamonds. I definitely want to use this piece because it almost looks like a vintage piece. It, it does. Rock crystal was very prevalent in the 1920s. The work looks very much like my house. So all the rich antiquities and you Baroque design styles, person, right? I design it. I can't wait, so beautiful. Yeah. Remember, you'll keep your chin up to the light a little bit more? Yeah. I'm gonna just drop that finger down. Angle the top of your head towards me, right there. So pretty. I like it when everything kind of works out. To have a vision and then there's makeup and products and hair and lighting and film and blah, blah, blah. And then we actually created it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We did it. I'm really happy with it. I mean, where's my camera? I have to look at the pictures. 